this episode, we're going to have a look at Tailwind UI, but really just one of these specific components in it. And if you're not familiar with Tailwind, it is a utility first framework that allows you to build nice looking sites often without having to resort to writing any custom CSS. And with the Tailwind UI project, this is a layer on top of that, where you get a lot of already made templates that you can copy and paste into your application and then fit them in. However, the problem with these, and the one that we're going to look at in this episode, is going to be something like the calendars. And so let's take this calendar. It's a very nice looking calendar. It's not interactive here because it's just a preview, but having a look at it, this looks really nice. So I've signed into my account and we still can't interact with this calendar. We do see now that it is at least the HTML version and it's not the image version, but we can't still really interact with the calendar. If we look at the code, you'll see that all of the calendar dates, it's all static here. So there's a lot of work that's going to be required to take this implementation that's on this example component site and to put it into a Rails application and modify it with the code necessary to make it an interactive calendar. And it's important to note that I did not receive anything for making this episode. This is something where I do like this calendar implementation. However, in the form that it's been provided, it's not very usable. It's not a JavaScript library and it's not a calendar library. It is simply just the styling for our markup to make it look like a calendar. And it's also important to note that if you do want to use this, you do need a subscription to Tailwind UI and that does cost at least $150 if you're just getting the application UI or $300 if you're getting the whole bundle of all the components from the marketing application UI and e-commerce. And this is something where I did purchase the Tailwind UI library, but the underlying Tailwind framework itself is free. And so in this episode, we are going to implement that small calendar. We are going to make it interactive. And as you can see, we've also modified it a bit so we can see different events on each day. We can click on these days and then we can see the events pop up on the left hand side. And so the first thing that we're going to have to do is to get this calendar working. We're going to have to modify the static HTML that we've received so that we can navigate between months and on the different months. We need to put the logic in to gray out the months that are showing in part of the week, but are from a previous or from the following month. We then need to make each button clickable. So as we click on them, events will show up on the left hand side. We also need to add this little indicator that there are events on a particular day. And as trivial as it may seem, we do need to add this indicator of the current day that we are viewing, as well as we will on the current date have a bit of a bold color, just so you see the current date and then the date that we are clicking on. And to do all this, we are going to use a Rails 7 application using ES Build and Tailwind. And we are going to have to create a couple of different stimulus controllers to handle some of the interactions here with fetching in the events as well as displaying the events. However, most of the calendar, we're going to make use of the turbo frame tags to make this job a lot easier. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt? To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.